Hi guys, time to review this famous entry of the harem genre. I usually go for the dub version, but to live through darkness has yet to be adapted in English, therefore I will review the sub version. I was able to watch it in German though, but no worries guys, I will keep it simple because I have no desire to translate a whole show at the moment. So I will use the Japanese version with subtitles. Anyhow, I just don't like reading. I've read a book in eons. An anime with subtitles always proved to be a challenge. Now that I've got that out of the way, let's talk about how much I admire and respect the Two Lover franchise. Now I've already proclaimed DXD to be the number one harem anime of all time in my last video. Therefore I cannot give Love Rue the same title, but I sure can praise it for its well developed and interesting female characters. It is very rare to have such a massive harem, and you keep all the females that are relevant for 50 plus episodes. The Love Rue did the impossible and kept on adding more milfs and lollies to Rita's entourage, also keeping the story focused and the characters true to the established colorful personalities. These guys are so cheerful and cute that it is hard to understand why the main character hasn't sealed the deal with any of them. He has gotten close on many occasions, I give him that much. And considering how most Haran MCs don't even get to kiss the girl they love, I say Rito has made decent progress in his journey for romance. The fan service is excellent. Unlike the XD where quality and quantity combine in a boob Masterpiece. The Love of Darkness has a more tasteful approach in portraying the numerous and abundant edgy scenarios Rito is so fortunate to experience. <laughs> Man, the frequent nudity works so well with the German language. It feels like I'm back in high school when I see Rito stumble his way into a girl's cleavage. <sighs> <laughs> Humans are very open about sexuality, and by that I mean girls there are easy. Nearly as easy as these ones. I know Japan really likes Germany. So I have an educated guess which supports the assumption that anime is basically how Japanese people see Germans go around their lives. You pee fetishist! Pee fetishist! <laughs> if it is there for five years, I gotta admit, it is not fully inaccurate. Of course, I didn't get any action. But people I know did. Um, let's go back to watch anime. So the first season of The Love Rule ended without fully adapting the source material, and it took yet another one to finally bring the story to a thematic and satisfying resolution. In my opinion, Moto Love Rule is the best entry in the franchise. The show is focused completely on the hard goals from the harem and offers many comedic moments and a fair amount of decent character development. My personal favorite is Yui Kodegawa. She's such a tsundere, trying to be dominant and strict towards others, but in reality, she's just a shy girl who is hesitant to give chocolate to the boy she has a crush on. Naturally, the guy in question is the main character, who is enjoying way too much sugar and attention from women to be good for his health. Motulovu also serves as the perfect transition between the romantic comedy of the first adaptation and the more mature, itchy drama of the Lovru Darkness sequels. At the beginning of the series, Rita was mostly preoccupied with his love triangle. All the other girls were healthy and beautiful additions to the story. But the main character was primarily tasked with choosing between Haruna and Lala. The first season plays a lot like Nisekoi. The main character plays a shy, gentle, feminine, and insecure girl, also being forced by the fortunate hand of fate to marry an exotic, energetic, and extremely beautiful girl from overseas. You mean me? I'm Lala. 
Your name's Lala? That's right, from Planet Devaluke. Well, Lala is from outer space, but considering anime, girls from space and Europe are basically the same thing. Anyhow, it was a classic love story. Except how the protagonist was constantly cheating on them with other males and all this, what a love rule takes the focus away from the love triangle and prioritizes the whole harem. Every girl has a chance to shine. And believe me, there are many. Rito has been a busy boy. Now, I've already covered how awesome these episodes are in my previous reviews of the franchise. Therefore, I only add how I like the fact that Haruna and Lala have a more secondary role in the injuries to come. It was the only way to continue the series. The love triangle has to come to an end eventually. And then what? Marriage and children? Oh no. Rito deserves a bit more fun time before settling down with his wives. The writer had to basically ask himself, how can I have Rito end up with all the chicks from his harem? And not just pick one like a lame, low-abiding citizen. The answer is simple. Have one of the twin sisters make all the arrangements for him. Not only is the main character drowning in estrogen, but he does not even have to work for it. Mama is cutting his concubines, but all Rito has to do is act like the sensitive nice guy. Man, this is not a harem anymore. This is heaven. The last twin sisters were a small part of the story until Love Through Darkness. And now that Momo is gathering women for her master. Nana is also preoccupied with her new BFF. There's yet another girl that as of now seems to get increasingly more screen time than before. And I'm talking about Yami of course. The whole sequel saga carries her name, Darkness. And she takes center stage in a story. Whenever something more dramatic or character driven happens. The show is still mostly a slice of life comedy with a lot of fan service. But we do get a bit more action than before, and at certain times, the anime even turns a bit dark. <laughs> it's the title, I guess. Ever since Moto Love Ru, it is established that Rito's sister, Mika and Yuki, is trying her best to get closer to Yami. Don't exactly know why they end up becoming the best of friends, but Mikan kept on insisting in spending time with her, and Yami eventually accepted her feelings. Sadly, it does not go the Yuri route, but we do get plenty of that with the twin sisters. Hmm, reminds me of K6s. <sighs> Good times. Good times. Initially, Yami Darkness was sent to assassinate Yuki Rito. But after a brief confrontation with Lala, she agreed to only supervise him. <laughs> she keeps on repeating how Rito is still her target, but it is fairly visible how she has developed feelings for him. It was inevitable. It was inevitable. Considering this is a harem anime, all the main kata has to do is be himself and act like he cares about a girl's feelings. This automatically makes him attractive and gets him laid, despite his appearance. Uh, if only this would work in real life as well. Now that I'm done crying, I gotta add something. That's always makes me happy. The fan service. So far the franchise has never disappointed in presenting succulent and beautiful young ladies. And things only get better. To Love of Darkness is a more faithful adaptation of the source material, both in regard with the story and the abundance of female naked bodies. Finally, we get the edgy scenes this franchise deserves. As I mentioned before, the twin Devlux sisters are starting to receive more screen time than before. Momo is constantly busy in trying to hook up Rito with all the girls from his class. 
but Nana enjoys a bit less popularity at school than her twin sister. It was made clear from the beginning, but for some weird reason, Momo has bigger tits than Nana. This is an anime stereotype when it comes to twin sisters. One is usually flat chested, while the other is big and bouncy. Momo looks so innocent on the outside. While having a surprisingly perverted and loose personality, she acts like an easy woman. I guess it works perfectly with her good girl appearance. Always trying new ways to seduce Rito and never stopping from making his love life even harder. Momo is a naughty girl to the core. She likes teasing other girls from the harem, especially her twin sister, and Rito's sibling. Mikan. Girls who offer more resistance when it comes to accepting their feelings are the perfect target for Momo to play with. Needless to say, giving Momo the spotlight was the best decision this anime could have made. When it comes to Nana, however, she's less popular with the boys, mainly due to her tomboyish attitude and distrust in Yuki Rito. <laughs> As of the first episode of Darkness, she befriends a fellow female classmate, namely Mea Kurosaki. She's a brand new character to join the harem and seems to be fascinated by Nana's ability to talk with animals. If it were me next to her, I would think loneliness has broken her. But nevertheless, Nana and Mea become close friends, kind of like Yami and Mikan. One small problem though, it turns out Mia is actually an assassin, just like Yami. And she was sent to Earth to bring back the old Golden Darkness. It is revealed that she is Yami's younger sister, and she was created by the same organization and from the same project as her. So many sisters in this anime. Can you guys please turn this into citrus? I've dreamed about my first kiss for so long. And it was just stolen from me. I like Mia. she's more open towards others, unlike her sister, and she even admits her feelings towards Rito, unlike Yami, who is in constant denial of her love. In a way, Mia is similar to Momo. She's playful, and likes to tease him a lot, combine that with her dark, mysterious past, and the ability to create deadly weapons with her hair, and you got yourself an amazing female character. To join Rita's harem. Alright, guys, won't spoil any more of this heaven. I strongly encourage you to give this anime a try. This is without a doubt an amazing depiction of the harem genre. I give Love of Darkness an 8.5 out of 10. I'm so glad we get one more season to admire these beautiful ladies.